rightfully divide the word. Again, that's a problem for a lot of churches because if you do that, a lot of the things that they preach, they can't preach because they know that if they preach it, it'll be what? Taking the scripture out of context. All right. So welcome back to another video. This is the Pastor Divine. Today we're going to be watching George and Cliff going at it again. Uh, this one's going to be answering questions other Christians won't. Episode 38. But this question is, do I need to go to church or are most churches corrupted? I have a lot to say about this probably. If you want to support the channel, go down below. Hit the link down in the description. Get some goober, can't reason, merch. Atheism fails merch. Support the channel. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Um, all right, somebody asked, do I need to go to church? And if so, why? I feel like church, sorry. I feel like church, like most churches are so corrupted. Sorry, it was worded. I no, they did word it. Yeah. Yeah. So do I need to go yeah. to church? And if so, why? I feel like most churches are corrupted. Sure. Okay. So I love this question because according to the latest Harvard studies, I throw this out at people who don't go to church. I just throw the Harvard studies out because you would not expect it from Harvard, a, right. a tremendously secular school. Right. 2018, they put the study out talking about if you take your kids to church in their 20s, they have a 60% higher chance of well-being and happiness. And then a more recent Harvard study talked about how if you go to church, healthy church, like you were saying, it, you have a much higher percentage chance, it's like 70% chance of women getting off drugs, um, exponentially higher chance of decreasing depression, anxiety, increasing life expectancy. So I just throw hard, like, like I, you could take it from a biblical perspective and you should eventually. Mm -hmm. but Imagine that. Imagine that. Like, I always ask people this. You know, and, it, and, it's, and it's a question that a lot of people just don't ever answer. But when you go down, you drive, okay? You're driving a car, boom, boom. How many churches are there? You know, you pass by like, what, 20 in just a mile? Like, not kidding. Here in Venice, especially, you pass down like five in just like a couple minutes. Um, the, and the amount of people that go to church is a very small percentage. And a lot of the people that go to church are well off. They know how to manage their money. They're more happier. They have more successful lives, happier lives, ongoing relationships that have been going on for a long, long time. They have children there. Their children are happy. They're growing up to be successful. They're learning to be respectful, to control their mouth, to think positive, to do positive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then when you get out of church, you see kind of the opposite side. But the thing that it differs between a kid that goes to church and a kid that doesn't go to church is the fact that they're being raised to be secular versus a child that has been raised to think objective, okay? And not subjective like the secularists are, and like the humanists are. So when you have those two different things, when the kid that has been raised in church to know church, to know who God is and who Christ is and to follow in his footsteps and the Messiah's footsteps, you you know what is right and no wrong. And so when you do bad things, you instantly get this like sensation of like regret, you hate it, you know it's wrong, should I do it or should I not do it? And that type of thoughts come to your mind. So a little battle starts happening. Instead of being a secularist and a, a humanist where you just say, you know what, I'm just gonna do it because I, I think it's good and I feel like it's gonna help me instead of just doing that. A lot of the problems that we're in now happen because you have a humanist secularist view. To be very honest, you do. A lot of these problems now are happening because a lot of people base their decisions off what makes me happy instead of looking at the outcome of what will happen if you partake in this action. But I start with these stats being like, you, you can't get, so Harvard stressed that you can't get those benefits right. from going to like a country club or some type of community center or something. So I think supernaturally, it's, it's crazy how church works like that. Say my country is a mess. Say my country is divided and say my country is in a place that I'm not happy with. I could either be a man who looks around and be like, wow, there's a lot of work to get done. Or I could be like, nah, I don't want to be a part of this country. Screw this country. This country is whack. This country is stupid. And, and then now you're just a part of the problem that you are running away from. Uh, if your home and your church is divided, what makes more sense to you? To run away from it because it's corrupt or to start and by the way, this is, this is a lot of people are going to be like, well, how could you? It is not a sin to question the man of cloth. I don't think it is. If you think your priest is out of line, like I'll give you an example. There's an Assyrian church that I, like, I go to. I don't, I don't think they're good with money. I, think I don't think they're bad people. They're just not good with money. So what was the, the decision? People stopped donating to the church. And I turned to my mom and I go, that's heartbreaking. Why would your people stop giving to your church? Why don't you start figuring out what the problem is and get to work? The reason why is because there's a lot of churches that do not like to be questioned at all. And they'll put you as the threat, okay? And this is happening to me. 
and this is why I had to leave the church that I, I was just previously going to. It's because I was being mistreated for now over a year, okay? So first of all, it was the very fact that I was going to Bible studies with the executive pastor. It's set up as a business. Like, why would you need an executive pastor in the first place? But you do. The, the whatever pastor uh, ran the Bible study. And what would happen is that we would, we would study, study different topics of what the sermon was about. And one day it was about tithing. And so I have my own view of tithing. I know that tithing is an Old Testament thing. It's now about, in the, Old, in the New Testament, it's now about giving from the heart, giving what you can and what you can in times that you can. Not being forced and having to give um, a certain amount every single week or every single month. It's what you can from the abundance of your heart. And usually I'm, I always sit there quiet because, you know, I have a I have a point of view that is very strict and very plain and simple, but people don't want to hear it. So during this whole session of speaking about tithing, I kind of just sit there quiet. I don't really talk. I don't speak because I don't want to get in trouble. The, the pastor turns to me and says, hey, what do you think about tithing? Like, why do you think people have such a hard time talking about it? And then I I responded and they can even confirm this I said I just I don't think it's a good idea for me to talk then he kind of pushes me into a, a, a more into the corner and says no 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 we want to we want to hear and then I said okay and I said that um, tithing is a Old Testament 10% it was an Old Testament and matter of fact it was not only 10% it could possibly reach up to 45% depending on how things were and what you did and how much you produced and etc. It went from 10 to like 45% depending on how much you made. It was insane. And then you can get into more detail about tithing and say that guess what the church would take all the tithing that were given for that time would not use it for themselves. So none of the money would go to the priest. None of the money could go to the temple. None of the money could go to food and services for the priest or the temple or to even God. It would go out to the homeless, to the widows, to the community. Now I would have to ask every church, does the church do that? And if they say no, then why are you picketing which parts of tithing you want to practice? Now I didn't go full out like this. And then he kind of like, uh, just kind of laughs at me. Like, uh, well, we could, we could debate on that. And I said, okay, well, let's go to Leviticus. Then for like the next 25 minutes, they, they all did this. But for the rest of the time, they kind of looked at me trying to convince me to tithe and why I should tithe and why I should do this and why I should do that. Then at the end, he he came over and says, you know, um, do you have a problem with how we run the church? Because I feel like you do. You're not on board of like what we do for tithing and etc. I said, no, I don't have a problem with, you know, tithing on how you run the church. I'm just saying that if we're going to do tithing, we need to do it the biblical way and not just 10%. It's what people can give and et cetera and not feel forced. And then he said that, you know, we don't mean to like make you feel uncomfortable and et cetera. And if we did, let us know. And I said, absolutely you did. You guys talked at me for like 20 minutes trying to convince me why I should tithe. And so from at like this moment on, it just became known that this pastor had something towards me. He didn't like the way I spoke. He didn't like the way I talked. He didn't like the way I viewed scripture because I take scripture and I read it and I compare and contrast. I rightfully divide the word and I come to conclusion by that. Instead of taking what I think is going to work and I just apply it. That's what the majority of churches do. So I can understand why people don't want to challenge or question the church. It's because you'll be looked down on. You'll be kicked out. You'll be asked to leave. Maybe the guy counting is dyslexic. I don't know. Maybe the guy doesn't know how to invest. I'm not trying to poop on anybody. But if there's a problem, on like, well, no, I'm not just not going to be a part of it. And it's just like, that's kind of a brat standpoint. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that's, yeah. that's that's not humility if you think that you're gonna walk into a perfect church send me the address I'd yep. love to attend yep <laughs> but I know that there's in that same church that people are not donating I know that there's a lot of good people that love Christ and they want to do good and they're trying their best but nobody wants to say hey why don't we gather together and also I wanted to circle back to this Bible verse when two or more gather in my name I am present I was explaining to somebody that this is how I see it I believe that when God explains how you pray, it should be alone, right? All right, so that's another verse that gets taken completely out of context. First of all, when two or more are gathered, I am there or I am present, is not about prayer. It's not. That is about the court and justice being done and accusing other people of sin and forgiving other people and approaching people and correcting them. That's what that verse is about. Not 
not prayer. Because here's the question that I always have to ask. If two or more are gathered in my name, I am there. What happens if one person in his closet starts praying? Is Jesus not there? See, that that's where I have to go. That's when you have to uh, take scripture and compare and contrast and rightfully divide the word. Again, that's a problem for a lot of churches. Because if you do that, a lot of the things that they preach, they can't preach. Because they know that if they preach it, it'll be what? Taking the scripture out of context. There's a reason why I don't like... Uh, uh, devotions and it's because of that because you can take a little bit of a scripture and apply it so many different ways but it trains your mind to apply that scripture wrongly that you keep doing it to other verses so when you read the scriptures you get this whole different interpretation than it really should be now if that one little verse changed your life i'm so happy but again i don't like devotions because it's dangerous and it, it, it trains your mind to completely misinterpret scripture a whole like on purpose in a sense or by accident because you don't even realize it that's just my my intake on this but but that doesn't mean he's not with you i think he is with you i think when god says when two or more gather in my name i'm with them i think it's holding them accountable i think if you're going to say something for god but then cliff is like whoa, whoa that's against biblical form and he flips through the scripture i think god could work more with more people united discussing their point of views and using the scripture is that how the bible verse was intended or yes I like it. And it, 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 answers, it answers that question Call mom now. <laughs> hey, Siri, call mom. No kidding. All right. I can't see God. Neither can you. I can't hear God's voice audibly. Neither can you. Yeah. It's a very personal thing, very deep thing. But guess what? I need you. You need me. That's what the church is. The people of God who want to get to know an unseen God who doesn't speak audibly so you can hear him. He speaks deep within our spirit, within our heart. And yet that can be confusing. That can be unclear. That's why we need church, to hear God speak to us through other believers who we build friendships with, who encourage us, who teach us, who hold us accountable. Yep. Now, the proof of what Stuart was saying earlier is that church really does help us tremendously. Tyler Vanderweel is professor, so he's tip top of the academic world. Are you at checking me right now? <laughs> hey. yes. He has shown, <laughs> he has shown <laughs> Tyler Vanderweel has shown that the, when you go to church regularly, the mortality rates go down 20 to 30%. You lead a healthier life. To regularly attend church services, you're more optimistic. You have lower rates of depression, Ooh. lower rates of suicide. Ooh. You have greater purpose in life. Ooh. You are less likely to divorce. Ooh. You are more self-controlled. Now, if you went to an atheist church or anything of the like, a humanist church, uh, the universal church, you receive nothing like that. You receive nothing like that. Matter of fact, if you go to a church that's opposite of what he's speaking about, they're just gonna tell you that you're you're loved and will will help you go through your life even if you are in sin. Because you, if you don't get rid of that sin, it is going to hurt you tremendously. Are there problems with churches? Absolutely yes. So find a church where it's not just a hypocritical country club. Instead, find a yeah. church where people are genuinely seeking to know Christ. They fear God. Bingo. I think that that's the most important. And I think people are so scared to say that as Christians are like, well, that leaves a bad taste in their mouth. Like, no, it's not. Listen, I, I don't fight what God put plain and simple. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. If Ooh. you don't fear a God, you're going to not fear him and make your own decisions. Oh, yeah. I think I want a church that is stressing that they want to make sure that they're in the right path of God. So find a church that fears God. Bingo. It's funny when people say that, you know, oh my gosh, you're legalistic, you can't be doing this, and you can't be doing that. But at the same time, they say to you, you should do this and you should do that because you need to do this and because it has this effects and all this and all this stuff. So they just flip it. Instead of following God's standard of goodness and what he says is good, they say, follow what we think is good and what made us feel good. But in reality, it's no matter how good you feel, guess what? You're the one with problems. I'm the one that's legalistic and I don't care if I'm legalistic i don't care i'm happy you've had these many divorces you've been dumped by these people your friends have walked away from you you don't even know who's real or fake you can't even decide what to do with your life you're depressed you're sad you hate life and you're telling me to follow your way no nah. so when someone says to you religion is bad for you look them back in the face and say okay drugs are bad for you whoa 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 time out time out. there's a difference between cocaine and life-saving medication. So that's true of medicine. It's also true of church and religion. There is religion that's highly destructive. Yep. And most of us have been burned by religious hypocrites. Mm -hmm. But in the same way that you don't go to cocaine, instead you go to life-saving medication, you go to church, but you find one that fears God, that stands in awe of God, like you said so beautifully, George. You go to a church where they're not self-righteous, 
arrogant twits who say, I'm better than everybody else, hope you can be as good as I am. No, the church is Christ's hospital, where broken, sick people like me are being healed by the grace of God, by God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. And for somebody who is wondering, you know, maybe what the first step is, would you say that it would be more important for them to find the relationship with God on their own by studying their Bible or more important for them to go to a church? I, I would say that you, you should go to a church. I think if you if you study by yourself, you're taking in what you want to hear and you're not exactly hearing the things that you don't want to hear. And a lot of the times that in order for you to change, you need to hear the things you don't want to hear. You need to hear the flat out truth because the majority of time when people stay home and they look up scripture, or they read sermons, they want to learn things that they are comfortable with hearing. So they don't hear the full truth. They pick and choose. They nitpick what they want to hear and they try to justify everything that they do based off what they want to hear and what they've heard. So it becomes this like this this bias um, religion that they live in. It's, it's very self-soothing, self-pleasing. In other words, they have become what they don't want to be. They want to have a relationship with God, but at the same time, they can't even define it. They don't know what it actually is. They think they're better off, but at the same time, they're the ones that have become less meek, less kind, less loving. And I find that to be true with a lot of Christian rappers nowadays that I listen to. Tyson James, to Bison Gray, to a lot of other Christian rappers. They have pushed away church. They don't go to church because they think it's all corrupted. But at the same time, you see people like me and other people know how to communicate with sinners, go out and share the gospel with other people. They We know how to partake in um, groups that are of unbelievers and we know how to talk to them, negotiate with them. Not really negotiate, I shouldn't use that word, but use apologetics to reason with them, to love them, to, to tell them about Christ, even in the hardest times, instead of just saying and pointing fingers, telling people that they're going to hell and that I'm not, you know, because I'm somehow more righteous than everybody else. Let me, let me make this clear. People who don't want to go to church because they think churches are too corrupted. I would say uh, uh, one of the most prideful people that could ever be. One of the most prideful Christians that could ever be. And I'm not just saying that because of what I've seen. I'm saying that because I was like that. I don't need church and I don't need that. And I got very, very angry. People could tell the negative effect of it. I started talking to people different. I started reacting to things differently. I started studying the things that I wanted to hear instead of actually looking at the scripture. And I found myself just um, satisfying myself until I found like articles that I just wanted to hear that would, you know, um, tell me that I'm correct. So it would just confirm what I wanted to hear instead of just like picking up the scriptures, reading it. And then when I had questions about a verse or whatever, then I would search up videos about that verse so, I mean, you should go to church. It's also helpful with accountability. So when people do see you going down this route, they can warn you or ask what's up. We can here to help you. Or if you have questions about the scriptures, it's not just some online person from the human rights campaign. It's somebody who generally cares about you and has the fear of the Lord in them that will tell you the straight out answer. And it's all right, because guess what? If you go home and you research that question and that answer, you can come back and ask more questions or try to challenge that person saying that I heard this about this verse. What do you say about that? And et cetera, and blah, blah, blah. You don't get that if you're just sitting in your room listening to videos all the time that you choose and pick and, and listen to. You don't get that. You don't get that personal relationship. Human beings are personal. We need to be around other people, like-minded people. You don't get that by sitting on the couch watching a church or service online or just hearing some voice off of your phone. You don't get that. Both. Great question. Both. You got to do both. This guy has been used by God to encourage me, to challenge me, to build me up in the faith, and I'm his father. But God has spoken directly through him to me. So. I need to study the Bible, pray on my own, but I also need to get together and build meaningful friendships like I have with Stuart, but also like I have with a bunch of wonderful, awesome men and women of faith at Grace Community Church in New Canaan who are just wonderful people and God speaks to me through them. Mm -hmm. But once again, that requires humility as you were saying, George, mm -hmm. because if I'm not humble, no, 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 I got it all together. I don't need you. Yep. I, I think I just do it on my own. Mm -hmm. And that's baloney. That's totally Prideful to half think that you know more than the other and like, yeah. I don't need your advice. Exactly. Yep. So half of my comments down below, a lot of the time are people who say, I don't need God, I don't need church, I just need the Bible and God and that's it. Okay, all right. Right, exactly. That, that's the reason why um, when people are like, why don't you start your own church or your priest or whatever, like yeah. preach, I'm like, bro, I'm so far away from that. That's so much weight. Mm -hmm. They say that it's better for you to tie an anchor to you and throw yourself in the deepest <laughs> part of the ocean than to speak God's word wrong. Hey man, I do that every day. I don't think I'm equipped to be leading sheep. 
when I'm a bad man myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like that one, huh? That was on the fly, huh? <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be a comedian. <laughs> uh, Here, let me find another question. I think, well, the church, too. While you, while you look, I have one more for you guys. But go, please. I, well, I, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but it's pretty big on TikTok right now. There are a number of accounts, at least, that have come, by, come through my feed where people are really pushing, oh, don't go to church. You, you know, like you were saying, mm. the, the priests are bad, the pastors are bad, and plus, there's just no, there's no point waking up on a Sunday morning. You have your Bible. Just focus here. And they're speaking ill of the church. Yeah. That's why, that's why it's a good question. It's relevant right now. Yeah, yeah, disguise yeah. the sheep. My See, that's one of the things that I always say is that even though I say, you know, churches are corrupt, there's a lot of problems. I say that like, no matter what, you still need to go to church. You still need to go to church. You're hearing this from a person who's been constantly rejected by the, the leaders of a church and being pushed away all the time. I still go to church, even though all these things are happening, because I know the importance of gathering up with people who are like-minded and to be very honest even though i don't or, or those pastors don't agree with me on like biblical things like tithing and they don't like to be challenged even though i say here's a bible let's go to leviticus etc and they don't like to be challenged there's people that i know in the community of the church that are volunteers who go to church and they sit next to me that think exactly like me but they just don't speak it out so i'm not the only one that thinks the way that I think there's other people but they just don't speak it out because they know that it will cause trouble or cause division not division within the church but division between the church with the with the leaders so you still need to be in community but maybe just don't volunteer because once you get in volunteering and and kind of like signing your life to this church in a sense because it's a spiritual covering you're not just volunteering at a church you are signing a document a spiritual covering of that leadership to guide you so everything that they do as a church now covers you and it will affect you like i i think that deeply into all this stuff it's like marriage when you marry somebody you become one flesh your household becomes your roof so when you have children and everyone lives under that roof everything that you do you bring it to the household and it affects everybody everything the wife does affects everyone everything that the children do affects everybody under that spiritual covering that's what happens the same thing for a church what the pastor does will affect everybody in that congregation all the volunteers especially so it's not just you volunteering it's you accepting the spiritual covering and the spiritual responsibility responsibility to hold each and every single person accountable to their actions and what they're doing my friend yeah mm -hmm. yep wolves disguise the sheep hey. it's so easy listen it, it, if it's too good to be true it's probably not true right so if it's like yo you could do it all on your own it's like well then how did god's people fail you know what i mean right. they got verbatim an audible message from god and they still got it wrong you could have all the wisdom in the world but if you don't yeah. understand it it's pointless it's like you could have all the money in the world but if you don't know how to spend it it's pointless mm -hmm. um so I would, you know, you are who you hang out with. And if you hang out with people that pretend they got it all together, mm -hmm. I want to I wanna sit with a man who claims, like you guys, like I don't know anything, and I'm a sinner. That's the man I want to hang out with because now I know you got it. Bro, I need, I need people like George. I do. I need people in my life that are just like George that speak like this. Right now, I got people in my life that right now that do not speak like this and speak wisdom. I just have people that just uh, are in the wrong completely. Yeah. When you're measuring your uh, uh, mental strength against God and you humble yourself and be like, I'm dust. Then I'm like, that's the guy you get along <laughs> with. Not the guy who's like sipping coffee who probably propped up his phone and shot for three hours explaining and then editing on tiktok why i shouldn't go to church hey buddy go find jesus <laughs> well isn't it uh it was a uh, true understanding doesn't come without the reverend fear of god <laughs> so that'll be it for this episode thank you guys for watching hit the like button subscribe for more check out the rest of my content again i love this series i'll probably pick a couple more and that'll be it for this and i'll probably find like another podcast like this that they they talk about a lot um well, hit me up in the comments uh, what I should react to and what I should talk about next or uh, teach on. Um, and uh, I'll make a video on it. I don't know. This is 33 minutes long. It is 1.12 in the morning right now. So you see how I'm working right now. This is what I do. Come home and I, and I make videos. And then tomorrow I edit all these videos. Or I stay up even more late and edit some videos so I can get ahead of schedule. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.